Hey, what's going on guys? It's Bungleby here for MMOBomb.com and welcome back to the Free to Play Podcast. Today is October 13th, 2013 and we're on episode 87, closing in quite closely to the 100th episode. I don't know what shenanigans we're going to do about that, but in order to sort of perpetuate the idea of what we could do, I've brought along our co-host... Jason Winter, who you may know from the various controversial editorials he writes for MMOBomb.com. Jason, how are you doing tonight? Oh no, is that what I am now? The controversial editorial? Guy? I don't know. I'm the. I wake up when I see a hundred comments on articles that oh, you produce. Geez. That Talk- bad? Huh? Is it that bad or that good? <laughs> I, 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 even bad press is good press. I think you write great articles, Jason. How, how's your evening going, despite the the scathing reviews at times? Oh, I was doing well until you told me about that. But or well, and then as long as we don't talk about football, because that was not good today. All right. Well, what we can actually talk about is the fact that our other co-host is Kevin isn't here. I'm going to go ahead and blame the fact that Kevin has to babysit some puppies, and pooches, and other cats and felines and whatnot. You know, alive things that require care and what have you when people are out of town. So Kevin will not be joining us tonight. It's just going to be me and Jason tag teaming this bro fist in this episode. And we've got a lot to talk about, Jason. Quite a lot. So why don't we go ahead and delve right into this week's news topics. But before we do, before the news graphic goes across the screen, I have to tell you guys, just really quick, I'm going to plug this week's uh, weekly Bomb Live, I guess you could say. Or not this week's, every week's Bomb Live. It is happening Wednesdays, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Seriously, guys, you should check it out. We always make it a good time. I try to interact with as many people as possible on the stream. We play games. It's really loose. We play it fast and loose, you know, under the table, what have you. It's really fun, We, you know, and I do take requests. And if it works better out uh, for you guys, for me to be on a different day at a different time, just let Smokify know. Just let me know. And we'll try to accommodate the show because we really think... It would be great to have more of you guys engaged with that playing alongside of us. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into this week's news. Alrighty, so our first article is, uh, hey, Jason, what do you think Star Wars The Old Republic needs more of? Uh, more slave bikinis. Yes, always more slave bikinis. Never can go wrong with slave bikinis. Slave bikinis are very nice, although I think a little bit... You know, sexist. Just, just a bit. Just a bit. Not when they're on a gungan. Not so, uh, okay. Or, that's true. Play bikinis and gungans. That's what it means. There we go. That's that's how we that's how we fix this issue. I've never seen a female one. What do they look like? I don't know. What are we talking about? We're talking about Sotor getting a new expansion this time. The whole purpose of me asking you that, Jason, was I was going to say Sotor. Who thought it needed more space <laughs> in a space MMO, a space opera MMO? I guess you could say. Sotor well, is getting a space-themed expansion, and it's yeah. free, kind of. Well, it's as free as anything gets to Sotor, but I mean, yeah, basically, you just have to wait for it a little while if you're not a paid customer. Yeah. Paying All customer. you have to pay is your time. Well, you pay that, in time. that's an expensive commodity, though, these days. It is, especially for a free-to-play game, which you so happen to talk about in your new article on MMOBomb.com that everybody should check out. But, yeah. You like how you just, like... That, that that's, a, that's a smooth segue. Like, just, like getting the hundred uh, people bitching at me wasn't enough. Now I want to get another another hundred. I just want people to check it out because you made some pretty compelling points in that. But Sotor is getting a brand new space themed expansion. It's PvP focused too, so you get twelve v twelve space battles, and that's one thing I have to say, Jason. Out of all the Star Wars hubbub and blue and all the different episodes and the, the movies. What was one of the, you know, what was the two things that you could sort of label as being like iconic visions from Star Wars? Like, you know, scenes or types of battles or what have you. What, yeah. what was the two main iconic things? Lightsabers and space, space battles. Exactly. Lightsabers and space battles. Like, there were tons of space battles. The whole idea at the time that, you know, sci-fi could be done without strings like they did in Star Wars was crazy. And so the space battles like that were insane. And so the fact that Sotor didn't have space battles really uh, out the gate was a little bit disappointing. And they're finally adding them, but um, there are some restrictions per se. You know, you talked about it a little bit, Jason. The uh, If you're a free-to-play player, it's free for you. Congratulations. That's one of the few new free, free things that Sotor is offering. But uh, you're not going to get it till February. So... 
got like I don't know, four months. Well, when does the when do the regular the paid players get it again? December. S- December. So it's only well, it's only a two month then two month delay. Two. I mean, it two months delay. Sure. Could be enough of a delay so that everybody's like already over it by the time the general population gets it. But uh, it's PvP. I mean, people keep playing it forever. That's true. That is true. It is a two month delay. Um, those that are silver tiered, uh, not the you know quote unquote uh, players who are still actively paying for a subscription, but those who have like purchased it in the past, you know the preferred status members essentially they get it a little bit sooner than the free, and then finally the free to play members uh, get it last. Uh, if I'm remembering correctly, I need to pull it up, but I do know for a fact that uh, the pay to play as well as the ones that are preferred. Uh, they both, yeah, so the preferred status gets it January 14th, full public release goes on February 4th. Uh, so not even a full month in between preferred and uh, public. But preferred mm-hmm. does get several additional items, as does those who are subscribers. Things like uh, pilot decals and, you know, suit cosmetic upgrades, what have you, paint jobs, uh, unlocked gunships, etc. And the PvP itself does look like it's not on rails, which, of course, all of the current uh space sort of battles available in the game are on rails which i thought was really peculiar like that's not something that you would normally see in an mmo as touted as like a main feature is like this on rails thing it's certainly not in 2000 what 12 or so or 11 whenever the mm-hmm. sotor came out uh but yeah i mean is this something that you would get excited for jason would you would you log into sotor just to try this out <sighs> I mean, I don't think I really would. I mean, I certainly uh, certainly thought the old space combat was just awful, just crap, basically. I did, like, two missions, and I was like, okay, I, I don't need to do any more of this. Yeah. In terms of being a lapsed player, though, I, I get it'll be neat that it'll be there, but since we don't really know anything else about it, you know, right now I'm just assuming, I say 12v12, I'm going to assume it's something fairly simple, deathmatch kind of thing, or some other, you know. They do say there's multiple modes that they're going to oh, have. Oh, they do? They have multiple modes? Yeah, they'll okay. say there's going to be multiple modes of play. So you could assume, like, the standard deathmatch or control an area. I mean, we've sure. seen other modes done in games like, um, I almost said Starforge, but uh, games like uh, Gajan's other game, Gajan Entertainment's not... Uh, not War Thunder, not War but Thunder. Uh, it's, it's not. I want to say Star Citizen, but that's a, that's a whole no. different game coming out. Uh, but yeah, the other free to play game that's basically War Thunder in space. Uh, they have various modes that revolve around you know capturing and holding different objective areas of the map. So I, I would assume something similar to that. The the point is, I mean, if you, if you weren't playing Star Wars this time, or if you did stop playing it, is space is better space combat that thing you were waiting for. Like, was that your big complaint? Like, I like everything else about Star Wars, but I just wish they had better space combat. Yes. Probably. Do you mean that yes, as in that is your big thing? Or no, like yes, as in I'm be... agreeing with you. Is that yeah, really? Yeah, like... yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's good for the existing players. I'm not saying, you know, it's it's a good thing. It's not like they can have, you know, 8 million, they can change, you know, 8 million different things that, that people have said are wrong about it or that they complain sure. about. So it's a good thing to add, but it's not going to be like a game changer. It's not going to suddenly double their subscription numbers or anything like that. No, it certainly is, I guess you could say, uh, something to bring back players who were previously interested in it. Uh, but gaining new ones off of something that just seems to be primarily just a PvP expansion, yeah, like you said, it's not really going to be that. But it's nice to see that they're sort of focusing a little bit, at least on the current player base, and sort of retaining them, I guess you could say. And like, well, I said, it depends, like I said, it depends a little on what kind of modes they have. I wish they would do something special like like they did with like hut ball well where that was like oh my god that's totally cool and different even even that in in that sense like you got to also re- realize that the game the game is not built to be a starfighter mmo or anything like that obviously this these features are being added on using the existing technology and you know, tweaking it etc um so you, you kind of wonder like how good of a how deep of an experience are you actually going to get in general as well i mean there is a trailer which i'm sure we'll show a clip of uh, during the podcast um, you, where you can see sort of a little bit of the action, and there's some pretty good, you know, effects going on, the lasers streaking across. But in general, you know, it, it's not going to be as deep of an experience, obviously, as something like Freelancer or whatever other, you know, sci-fi space ship simulator game uh, you would like to play. Uh, Star Citizen coming out is, like, completely on another level of, like, realism, if you want to... Or even uh, X-Wing like, versus TIE Fighter. Right? Exactly. But, you know, some yeah. people may not remember that game. That's a pretty old game. Or like, the other, or the, any of the other. Uh, yeah, back in my day. I, well, any, I, I thought, any like, other... Freelancer, you know, that, that's a pretty good, like, sure. middle of the road. You know, that's early 2000s, essentially. 
Uh, but yeah, like games like that, you're going to have like something that's more dedicated to that. So while I do think that'll be interesting to check out, and I'm sure EA will do as, as much, you know, spectacular grandeur in a Star, for, a Star Wars setting as possible for it, um, I do think the fact that it's an MMO sort of limits uh, an MMO based upon tab target, you know, button mashing essentially um, will truly translate into a completely... Uh, rewarding uh, sci-fi, you know, spaceship battle experience. But we'll find out. We'll find out. Alrighty, so moving on to our next article, we're going to be talking a little bit about some uh, tower defense, Dungeon Defenders 2 tower defense to be specific. Um, not a MOBA anymore, Jason. I I think it was all the dances that I did, you know, asking, like, you know, like, please, whoever is up there, make this not, not, not a, you know, no more MOBAs for 2013 or something. Did I, you sacrifice a virgin to the I, sun god? I, I think it was the uh, the three squids I laid out and sacrificed, you, know, <laughs> you know, to Cthulhu or something, you know, something like that. Sure. Uh, that's what got Dungeon Defenders 2 not to be a MOBA. And I'm, I'm quite happy about this, I have to say. Trendy made a, a pretty large announcement saying that uh, they realized they done goofed making another MOBA and that they scrapped everything they did previous and were building a true, su true successor to the original Dungeon Defenders. Did you play the original Dungeon Defenders, Jason? Uh, I did not. Did you play any kind of third-person dungeon, like, you know, uh, tower defense game? I played a little tower defense, not so much for the third-person version, but just like the regular overhead, the same general kind of concept. But... I could actually tell you why not. It's not. It's nothing to do with you and sac making sacrifices. But I can give you a better idea as to why they're actually dropping this. Sure, go ahead. Because there was an article uh, a couple months ago on Kotaku, and the title of it was "Investigation: A Video Game Studio from Hell." And the opening line says: Seven-day work weeks, sex decisions, and office environments so toxic employees are terrified to speak up for fear of losing their jobs. And it was about trendy. Uh, particularly about uh, one of their co-founders, who was also the uh, managing the team that making Dungeon Defenders 2, who was apparently the biggest asshole in the world. Now, it is my understanding that he has since left. Yes, yes, that, that that's exactly that's why I'm saying that's probably the reason why it happened. And his his thing, one of the things that was mentioned in the article was he said basically if it's if League of Legends does it, we do it. That was his entire design philosophy. So the that's fact that they're taking this out. Design philosophy, yeah, that was for dungeon defenders. Uh huh. That was why it was a MOBA, and that's why they wanted MOBA everything. And if you read the, some of the comments with the article too, some of them are from employees, current or former, of Trendy, and they're all like, "Yep, totally accurate. This, this article is dead on." So wow. Well, it looks like Trendy is at least whoever is in control of it now is in an upswing. Um, more favorable conditions, we'd hope for the developers. It does seem like they a little bit more focusing. I'm bringing back the old design of Dungeon Defenders, which I think everybody really uh, wanted to see. I don't think anybody was truly excited about being a MOBA. They're kind of like, yeah, 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 okay, there's a MOBA mode. When does the real Dungeon Defenders 2 come out? You know, that kind of thing. Um, and it looks like it will be coming out still sometime. Uh, early betas will be later perhaps this year or the next year. Um, of course, the beta for the MOBA part of that already started you know, a few months ago, but Obviously, at this point, they've scrapped that and sort of had to rebuild. But it, it is already in the works. There is already sort of internal playable models they have. I mean, obviously, they had the art assets and everything. They just had to sort of retool the game of sorts. Um, so I'm actually really excited. It's still free to play, which some people are kind of upset about. But, uh, I mean, I like the first Dungeon Avengers quite a lot. Uh, there were a lot of things that I felt were sort of gimmicky about it, like not being able to use your your hero uh, really effectively in melee range. Uh, you know, it's just it kind of felt like more focused on just the towers, and your third person from their person there was just to place towers and keep them going. Uh, but they seem to, uh, according to Trendy's note, uh, seem to have been you know trying to fix that and improve that and sort of reemphasize uh, the use of the heroes themselves. And so I'm really, I'm really excited about it myself. I'm kind of anxious to see where they take it, um, and we gotta find out because it said stay tuned sometime later this month. An important date, quote unquote. They they said they're gonna reveal um, some really important details, and I yeah. would assume that would be on Halloween. Oh, that would make some sense. Sure. Yeah, but I mean, I actually looked up what other important historical dates are in October. Would you like to hear some of them that? Oh, could, go ahead. They Educate. Could possibly, yeah. Okay, so for example, um, 
We can go here at uh, October 20th. Uh, the United States Senate ratified the Louisiana Purchase in 1803. They could be and, doing and it because they, of that. That's a pretty important date. Because then they set up towers to stop the uh, Native Americans. From exactly. Like the tower exactly. Defense they defense had yeah, to set sure. up perimeters. They had to go that. Done. You know, on October 26th, uh, the Erie Canal was opened in 1825. And the canal is like a straight line, so if it was going to be invaded, you'd want to put up towers along yeah, each side. it's a canal, you know, you fill that with water or whatever else you want to fill it with, you know, people down there. Acid. Exactly. Lava. You know, there's all, all kinds of relevant dates throughout October they can use. So certainly be on the lookout later this month for what Trendy has in store. Now, moving right along here. We're going to be talking a little bit about an, another Asian oh, MMO, which I think whenever I say Asian, it both sounds slightly um, not politically correct, <laughs> uh, I guess you could say. Uh, That's but also, the word you can use. I had something else in mind, but we'll go with that. Yeah, well, I, it, it is. Like, I mean, w that is unfortunately how we reference games from, you know, we can say Eastern, but Eastern sure. cover, it covers a very broad area. So in a, the Asian market, the Asian MMO market, um, we have Yule Gang 2, which is launching out of Korea. It's already been in Korea for several years, uh, coming now not particularly to the U.S. or North America specifically or the EU, but going to SEA regions, you know, Malaysia, the Philippines, etc. Uh, but it doesn't have an IP block, which means everybody, of course, in the world can access it, provided you can deal with however much ping that server will actually provide. So the MMO itself is kind of, I, I took a little bit of a look at it. It has a sort of an Age of Wushu vibe in the sense that you can dash through the air. In fact, it looks like it has a little bit more air mobility than Age of Wushu. They, they touted on their website like up to 15 uh, different air maneuvers you can do to allow you to dash and, you know, kind of run along the water. Everything that you see in Crouching High Tiger, uh, Hidden Dragon types of uh, martial arts films. They also mentioned there was action combat, not really tab targeting so much, so a little bit more freedom there. Um, and overall, that's pretty much the information that we got about it. I mean, there's more information out there. I mean, you can search the game. Like I said, it has been out for several years, and in Korea, it is pretty popular, um, according to what I've read on the interwebs. Now, is that what you read from the, like their press releases? No, no, that is not just what sources. I've read from their press okay. releases. That is, This is stuff that I've read from uh, news outlets that cover specifically... Uh, just games that are in Korea have not made it to the U.S. or anything okay. like that. And this was sort of aggregated as well. It was sort of like the general consensus that this game was somewhat popular. But keep in mind the Korean MMO market is vastly different than American MMO market. What we prefer versus what the Asian market prefers sure. is pretty different. And it really shows in a lot of the games. Uh, but, of course, you know, there there is some people playing some interest into it. And the game supposedly is going to have quite a lot of different martial arts maneuvers for you to learn. Uh, with a lot of uh, different styles of combat, as well as uh, raids and dungeons and PvP. Uh, and it's actually the sequel to, I mean, people see the 2, Yule Gang 2. What is 2? It's a sequel to Yule Gang 1. Oh, I loved Yule Gang 1. That was my favorite game. That was your favorite game, you know? <laughs> Yule Gang 1? Uh, a lot of people are like, well, you know, what the hell is Yule Gang 1? And like, well, there's a Yule Gang 2. What, what, what was the 1? Well, I it looked like it up. It was like Street Fighter 2. I looked it up. Yule Gang 1, all right? And it's like nothing like the original. <laughs> it is a completely different game. It's, it looks different. It plays differently. The characters are like chibi. Like it, it, it's like anime style. It was completely different. Apparently with the two, they went a whole different direction. And there was a lot of controversy because it wasn't very like the original. But it, it's holed up, I guess, over in Korea. And, and now there was a new deal struck uh, with SEA, which I guess that's as far as far to the west as we're gonna get so try it if you want to i suppose i'm just glancing at uh just the wikipedia page for yule gang it says it's known in the usa as scions of fate so apparently it came out in the u.s and it says it has over 100 million registered players of servers active in japan china taiwan thailand indonesia and america see so, i have never seen signs of fate it, it says as of November 2006, it supported 600,000 current users. But Science that was of Fate. a while ago. Scions. Yeah, yeah, I know Science of Fate 2 was the name that it was given. Uh, but um, I, it, was, it was my understanding that Science of Fate 2 was its name in Korea, not in America. Science, Yul Gang 2 is how I perceived it as being called in the are West. You are you telling me Wikipedia could be wrong? 
it could be. It could very oh, well be. Oh, gosh, man. What are you The talking? research that I showed is that it was called <laughs> Signs of Fate 2 in Korea. This is the first game. The first game was Signs of Fate. The yeah, and then even Mule oh, okay. Gang 2 was called Signs of Fate 2. There's two well, separate names. Two anyway, we're regions. just getting into semantics here. Uh, just to give my little brief, you know, two cents sure. on it. Mean, I think it looks neat. I think it's... Uh, I, I obviously, yeah, we're going to compare it to, to Age of Wushu because of the same sort of Chinese martial arts feel to it. And if it can come across, I, I know some people just love Age of Wushu because it's so incredibly complex and, and esoteric, and you have to be this super incredible expert to understand everything. But that just doesn't really fly in the long term yeah. to get any kind of serious audience in in the United States. If they can, if they can have a game like that. That that has a lot of action, but it's just a little less on the learning curve, a little less on the uh, hardcore nature of it. I think something like that could be pretty successful. And of course, if they can actually, you know, translate words properly. So what you're telling me is you need a more normal, rigid MMO to. No, it doesn't, I don't mind. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be rigid. It can still be a sandbox, go around and killing each other kind of thing. But just make it so that the skill gap between a good player and a bad player isn't quite as m- spectacular so you're not like hey here's 12 different classes of you know yeah kung fu fighters well, yeah, yeah, Pick yeah. one this early in the game when you have no idea how they play exactly, exactly. that kind of thing yeah, i got you i got you all right so you'll gain two it's launching sometime this year which we only have two months left so be on the lookout for that of course we're going to do a first look on it of course of course but moving on we're going to speak about something of a completely different nature Something a little bit, you could say, post-apocalyptic, European specifically, post-apocalyptic European, which I have to say, from the movies that I've seen, post-apocalyptic Europe scares me way more than a post-apocalyptic America. Yeah, there's no Brad Pitt in post-apocalyptic Europe. No, no, there's no, there's no sunshine or happy endings for <laughs> anything that happens over there. I mean, I've seen the movies. I know what happened. There's, there's too many areas for just widespread chaos and then you're out in the middle of nowhere and there's nothing there's a lot of nowhere in europe there's a lot of nowhere in europe exactly that's a good way that's a good way to put it. they should have like postcards that say europe and then in the back there's a lot of nowhere yeah <laughs> that's that's their motto that's the whole motto of europe <laughs> yeah. uh severium uh some of you may remember severium we've talked about it before it is a post-apocalyptic european fps developed by vostok games uh, which is a European developer, um, excuse me, European developer that uh, helped develop the Stalker series. They're best known as some of the developers behind Stalker, and they were working on Stalker 2 uh, before the project was shut down, and it sort of became, sort of, but not quite, became Cerverium. So now they're working on Cerverium, which is their free-to-play sort of entry into the universe and uh, we got a trailer for it that specifically showed off some of the PvP gameplay. And I have to say, I, I didn't actually, uh, I haven't seen too much footage, in-game footage of actual characters moving around up to this point for Severium. So it was nice to see some actual gameplay um, other than just like pans of environments and what have you. Speaking of environments, Jason, did you actually get a chance to check out this trailer? Yeah, I watched that and I really thought it looked nice. I, I thought the environments had that great kind of... Uh... I mean, it, of course, when I watched it, the first thing I was thinking of as I seen was something like Daisy, with with a nicer looking, you know, slightly nicer than the Armor 2 engine. But, yeah, I definitely carried that uh, a whole lot of nowhere kind of feel to it, but with a little, a little extra broken down, a little more uh, ragged buildings and so on. Yeah, I like the fact that since it's based in Europe, you know, you had a little bit of European architecture in, mm-hmm. in terms of, like, the style of, like, there was, like, a broken down church that they used, it's like a sniper yep. holdout. Um, and then also you had a lot of like diversity in, in the level I noticed that was broken out uh, to where there's like a lot of different avenues and pathways, both above and below uh, that you could sort of sneak around with, you know, these sort of acid or radiation filled pools of water it looked like. Um, which speaking about that, they're, they're, the gameplay itself from what I can see it looked fairly typical FPS. Um, the animations were admittedly extremely rigid, which the game is in alpha, so I can kind of forgive that, obviously. Animations do improve over time. Gameplay comes first and foremost. Um, but, you know, that, that was some of the things that I did notice off the bat. Um, I was kind of curious from, you know, if you sort of felt the same way, Jason, but I really when I was watching it, if I didn't know any different, I would just write it off as a, another FPS. Like, they're, they're really... 
they were showing I can understand that they were showing the gameplay um, but I felt like they they were they didn't show any of the elements that would you know diversify it other than the fact that it was set in this you know sort of different environment if you yeah, I mean again to me like I said I keep thinking back to Daisy and considering the starkness of it knowing that it's post-apocalyptic that was kind of the feel I got of it that that was the sort of thing they were going for minus the actual zombies and so yes. on so in that sense I think it does look kind of I mean it does like I said, given that kind of European look to it to the ruins and to all the the, the, the messed up buildings and so on mm-hmm. it does make it feel at least a little different to me as opposed to your typical you know you know Battlefield or Call of Duty or something set in a more uh, more uh, modern looking modern- American world, kind of yeah. look to it, yeah, yeah. I like I like that feel of it because it a little more rustic makes makes it feel a little more like you're really trying to survive. Like it's really just you and maybe a buddy trying to get by in the wilderness, as opposed to in the middle of a city when there are going to be you know 50 people around. So exactly, I do I do like that look of it. I think it, that helps distinguish it a little bit. I think from your typical run of the mill run of the mill shooter. Sure, I, I for myself I, I was a little bit let down that. You know, in terms of the FPS mechanics, it looked like the general run the mill where you run around, you aim, you know, you fire at mm-hmm. everybody, but everybody can expect it. I, I was hoping for a little bit more. Um, it did look like the maps were, were somewhat large, and the sniper had a pretty long range to shoot from. Uh, but it did feel like it was still like sort of enclosed, which it is to my knowledge that they aren't going to be implementing any sort of open world gameplay until later next year. Uh, so right now, these are sort of like instance maps, if you will. Uh, but still, when I think of a post-apocalyptic, I think of like open areas. You know, that's sort of the thing. Yeah. You are alone in an open area, and you stumble ac- across other enemies, if you will. It would be great if they went the path of Daisy or something like that, where it was like, say, a 64-player map, and it could even still be like you know shooting related, where you just out to kill each other. But the map's larger, and it's much more of like a hunt and be hunted sort of style of play, much more apocalyptic, if you will. Yeah, I mean, we need to know a little more about what exactly kind of game modes. Exactly. Kind I do of know are. a little bit about the ability system. Oh, uh, so have on their website, they do elaborate on their abilities, uh, which sort of gives me an idea of how they're going. So the ability system that works in the game is um, you get an ability, and the ability may be like passively absorb X amount of radiation damage. So you can walk through radiated areas without taking damage, right? Um, and then the active of that would be to throw a grenade, a radiated grenade, that makes a radiation sort of poison area that you know does damage to everybody inside of it. Uh, other ones would be like increases in speed and that kind of stuff, um, and so on and so forth. So the different sort of active and passive abilities all tied into one item sort of idea, which does give varying gameplay, but I still feel like it's only a slightly modified you know version of. Uh, equipment, you know, like flashbang mm-hmm. grenades, if you will, or whatever else, you know. I guess it's some way to give you some sort of leveling and progress. True, true, true. I, I guess the reason why I'm bringing up sort of these these things that worry me about it is because Severian, a lot of people are gravitating towards it because of the fact that it's being made by the stalker dev. So they're expecting a somewhat stalker-like experience. Um, obviously, the fact that they're making or focusing on the PvP first of the game uh, shows us that there's not going to be, off the bat at least, uh, a true one-to-one, you know, stalker experience or, or something even as similar to that as you would expect uh, if they just made Stalker 2, for example. And so I, I kind of wanted to pose this question and sort of pose this sort of idea to the listeners um, in terms of do you think or how long do you think the developers will can keep going and sort of build hype for the game before people will stop and be like, hey... Is there going to be a PVE element? Because that's some, some one of the things that they spoke about at again, but not until later next year after open beta. So I don't know. For you, Kevin, I mean, yeah, Kevin, what am I talking about? Oh, Jason? my gosh, not that guy. We don't talk about him. Well, Jason, uh, for you, I was talking to Kevin about it earlier. That's why I thought of it. Uh, Jason, for you, I was wanting to know, essentially, um, Cerverium, would you be interested in playing if it, if it was just PVP for the next year? Uh, yeah, I would. I mean, like I said, I like games like Daisy and that and that sort of thing. So, and there's, I don't, I don't know. I, when I when I play a shooter, I generally go for PvP. I'm not usually a, a big fan of PVE shooters as much. So, and 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 if they're gonna only able to, you'd rather they make one of them, make a good PvP game, and then try to make a PVE later on if you want to. 
as opposed to trying to do it all at once, having stuff be delayed or imbalanced from one version to the other. So I, I think if you you just go with the fact that it's it's not Stalker. It's not going to be another Stalker. So just be happy that they're making something hopefully pretty good and just go with that. So let me then ask you another question. If it's PvP, would you be more upset if they didn't add sort of more open world PvP maps in the future after or during the open beta, and or if they stuck with these sort of more enclosed uh, style of, of apocalyptic map? I think I would like that. It would depend a little bit on how big the uh, the enclosed. I mean, technically everything is an enclosed area. Yeah, you know, it just depends on how big it is. But yeah, I mean, it would depend on how large an area it is. If it's like your typical, uh, you know. Uh, battleground in a, or whatever in scenario in a lot of games then no not so much but if it's a, if it's at least a little bigger maybe even like a midway kind of in between then although I guess it wouldn't be persistent necessarily even like if it's more like deathmatch where the start and end then yeah that would be a little I'd even be yeah. okay with like instance areas where like you'd walk over an area say the size of battlefield a battlefield sure. map, and then you go to the next area sort of thing I would be even okay with that but yeah, yeah. I guess that's I guess that's the point. The, the point is not so much the size of the area as much as I I would have with with being uh, like uh, matches. I'd rather have it not be a, a match based kind of thing. Exactly. More more like on your own. I think that's Persistent. sort of the, the yeah, yeah exactly. And they have they have you know sort of talked about how the different factions in the game and sort of these factions warring against each other, uh, which does sort of immediately give it a little bit simpl- semblance of like organization and structure. Not mm-hmm. so much you know free for all, every man for himself. Uh, but I do believe some of the timeline stretch goals that they talked about uh, for the future on the website did mention a little bit more of like the open world free for all stuff. But the thing is that that's them talking about the future. We don't know exactly how long that'll take to actually implement. Things get delayed, and people just like in your article, people talk to you know you talk about how long do people want to actually invest both in playing a game or just waiting for a particular feature uh, before they say you know. It's not worth my time. I'm just going to move on to something else. So things to think about, you know, if you're into really a lot of PvP and you think it looks great, that's great. You know, Surveyor, Surveyor, Surveyor. Surveyor. That name. It, I, I it think seems like it should. It sounds like it's a take on survival. Yeah. It's like I want to call it Survivalarium or something. Yeah, like exactly. That. Like I want to put like Survivor at the end, like Surveyorium. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> Surveyorium uh, PvP. It's coming along. We'll see how it actually continues in the future. But alrighty, guys, that's going to go ahead and wrap up our weekly articles. Now, moving on to our weekly bombs, I'm going to go ahead and give my bomb first. Speaking of Battlefield, I'm going to give an A bomb to EA slash Dice because I don't know really who who to point the finger at the most. I guess I could do like two fingers, like I'm watching you, but one of them was pointing at EA, the other was at Dice. I'm doing it with my hands. It looks it looks like effective, uh, but I'm going to give it for Battlefield Four. Because of the incredibly bad performance I'm getting with it. Holy crap. You think play, uh, not PlayStation. It is going to be in the PlayStation 4. But Planetside 2 has bad performance. Uh, EA's Battlefield 4 has bad performance for no apparent reason. Uh, I'll get like 60 frames per second. And then it'll drop down to 4 for like 15 seconds every minute and a half. That's not a big deal. It's just a shooter. I mean, what's yeah, yeah. It's, okay. it's just every time I go around someone that's an enemy. It's know? not like you need frames in a shooter, you know. Yeah, it's 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 not like it's a turn-based game, right? You know, like, yeah, exactly. It's basically the same thing. Yeah. Basically, it's like one to one, apples to apples. Yeah, so it's incredibly bad performance. Yet, if you play it on Windows 8, suddenly the bad performance goes away. Suddenly, you have a normal performance. It plays fine. Apparently, that is because of some tweaks, quote-unquote, that they put in to Windows 8 version of DirectX that is not included in Windows 7 version. So, yes, eventually, apparently, DICE has plans to fix the performance. But, hey, congratulations if you just upgrade to Windows 8 or have Windows 8. Gee, golly, I wish I had Windows 8 so I could play Battlefield 4 better. I see what's going on, Microsoft. I see what's going on. Jason, what's your bomb the bomb? Uh, I'm going to give an A-bomb to my email, really? which which you might say, loyal listener to the podcast, well, how does your email being crappy affect me? My email being crappy affects me because I am just not receiving email from the people I talk to to arrange articles. Like, I've been going back and forth, trying to go back and forth, like, for a month with Wargaming to do an article on World of Warplanes, and they don't get my email, or I don't get theirs, and they, they eventually get back to me, like, three weeks later, and they're like, hey, did you send that? I was like, yes, I did. I 
sent it three weeks ago. And who do you use for your email? Do you use different providers? See, that's that's the crazy part. It's happening in both of my. I have to use two different email accounts. It's happening both with my Yahoo and my Gmail account. Uh, I mean, Wargaming is like two or three other companies. I mean, I talked about you talked with you about this guy that was set us up to do a video preview of something last week and mm-hmm. said he was going to email me back to talk about it. I never got it, and it happened. And I talked to him. Was like, well, what happened? It's like, oh, I sent you the info. It's like crap. So. And then, like a month ago, I was trying. I just sent a document to somebody. An hour later, he calls me. and was like, "Hey, where's that thing you're going to send me?" I did. I sent it. And then I remember a couple of days ago when I was trying to send you an email, and yeah. I told you I got this crazy bounce message, and then I sent you an email later, and it works fine. So you realize what that means? What does it mean? It means the NSA is snooping in on your emails. What do you have important that you're hiding, Jason? Uh, uh no comment. Move on to the next Are piece. You a sleeper agent. Is that what's going on? Do you work for Mother Russia? Yet. Yet, he says. Yet. Moving on, then. All right. Kevin did leave his The Bomb here, so I'll just go ahead and read well, Kevin's Why don't we bomb. let him do it next week, though? All right. We can. All right. Uh, yeah. Don't want, don't want to hurt him. I'll just, I'll just leave it. It's all tough right. to come up with this. All right, Kevin. Now. All right, Kevin. I'll just, I'll just let you leave it for now. You'll be here a lot next week, I guess. All right. Member Bomb's in. Uh, we got one from Dark Blade. Dark Blade, thanks for sending this in via my email. He sent it in to Michael at MMOBomb.com. And he said, I want to give an A-bomb to Grand Theft Auto V online. He has it in caps, so you know it's online. online. <laughs> Even though it's not free to play because of how online acted the first week. You couldn't play, and when they fixed that, then there was the problem where you couldn't log into the game, and you had no money, and your character rank was down. I know most games have problems when they launch online, but this is just ridiculous. Dark oh, he Blade. Only, he only I, lost rank and money. Some people were losing their entire characters. I guess it's like all relative. <laughs> <laughs> Although apparently Rockstar is going to give like half a million dollars to everybody who had, was affected by it. Yes, you're going to get $500,000 in compensation for that Dark Blade. Hopefully that allows you to go out and buy whatever you want to your heart's desire. Sounds like I think you can buy the most expensive, prop, most expensive property in the game, which, hey, here's a little bit of a quick trivia for you. Did you know that if you complete the game to 100% and go to random areas at particular times, you will see alien UFOs? A lot of people really? are conspiracy theorizing that uh, there's going to be a sort of alien-themed expansion or DLC in the future, or that there's already alien content in the game, they just haven't found it yet. Wasn't that, wasn't that Saints Row 4? Wasn't that all about aliens? Yeah, but you know, Grand Theft Auto. Maybe they're gonna they're gonna maybe jab at Saints Row, just, and then it's the cycle is complete. It's just a circle. <laughs> <laughs> Saints Row jabs it, and Grand Theft Auto, Grand Theft Auto jabs it. What, what they created. Okay, alrighty then. So Dark Blade, yes, I understand, but hopefully those little concessions did make up for the wound caused by losing your character's rank. Now X Crooked X, but he's not really X Crooked X. Formerly known as X Crooked X. Now known as Crooked, has something to say as well. Jason, what is that? Uh, he says, I've got a da bomb to smite. It's a ton of fun to play, and it's the only Dota like I've been able to enjoy. Can, can we just go out on a limb and say that with all the 8 billion MOBAs that have been coming out over the last couple of years, Smite is like the only new one that people seem to like? Like, a yeah. lot? I, other so, than Dota. <laughs> well, I mean, I said no. I said new one. I mean, really, like, totally yeah, new like concepts. Brand new IP, correct. Yeah, yeah. Smite so, is the only one. And I think it's just because they were the first third-person MOBA. Oh, I shouldn't have said that Loka was first, but Loka was terrible, so that one doesn't count. <laughs> so, Smite, yes. Yes, we'll say Smite was... That'll be like people saying League of Legends was the first MOBA. It'd be like, no, it wasn't the you first mean, MOBA. You mean There's World of this. Warcraft wasn't the first MMO? Oh, no, apparently oh, not. Uh, Ultima Online, no, actually, that's... There's still MMOs older than that. Ones where you just type. Alrighty here. So the question of the week last week then was, what do you think about developers using recycled series as new platforms for free to play? We're talking Ubisoft, specifically you, Ubisoft. You're a big offender. Anno Online, Tom Clancy series, etc., etc. We have one from a new guy this week. He's YBK356. What does your name stand for? I have no idea. Maybe Yay, it's like new guy. Yay. Hey, yeah, it is a new guy. I'm going to go out on a limb and say his name is a reference to, like, a color cartridge that you use for printers. Oh, okay. YBK, that sounds like... Well, that would be like like CMYK, though. That's one of them. Or RBG. Or RBG. So he's got kind of a mix there. 
something. Maybe it's, it's a, we, what color would that be? I don't know. YBK, what color would you be if you were maybe, a color? Maybe it's just license plate. Maybe it is. I gotta. <laughs> hopefully not. <laughs> he says that I would like Matrix Online to come back. I am a huge fan, Matrix fan, but I didn't get a chance to play Matrix Online. That's interesting. I mean, it was, again, same for me. See, I'm sort of the same way. It was like in my interregnum, between when I was playing MMOs was when that came out. And so I never got a chance to try it either, but... I think if there was, like, a new Matrix game, it would be pretty cool. Because, like, with new technology, you can actually do more realistic Matrix-style stuff. But I, I think people are just burn out on it. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, yeah, especially after the second two movies. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think anybody wants to see it. And, and the Wachowskis are apparently really crazy when it comes to their licensing. Really? Because um, the company, a card game company I used to work for was going to make a Matrix trading card game. Now, like at the last minute, they pulled out the Wachowskis pulled out of it, and so they were left with a basically developed game that they couldn't use. Well, that sucks. Mm -hmm. Maybe they can bring it out at random card game parties. Uh, I think they reinvented it as one of their other card games. Oh, okay. They just like changed everything. This is like this is like ten years ago. So yeah. Okay. All right. Well, why don't we go ahead and then and take our second new person that's actually commenting here. All right. This is from Sergio Source. Sergio. You know Sergio, yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, so as long as it brings money to the franchise, I'm down with it. The game looks fun, but nothing like the series, unfortunately. Seeing how people at Eidos still love the IP, if they are greenlit to make a new LOK of Legacy of Kane, I trust that they'll keep the same level of quality as the previous five titles. At least an HD re-release with codes with bonuses for the Nosgoth would be a step in the right direction. That would lead Nosgoth players to find the main series. So he's saying, yeah, yeah, as long as it like ties it in. They get a little bit of a cross-promotion, if you will. The free-to-play game promotes the regular series. The regular series maybe promotes the free-to-play game. That's sort of like what he says. It's like, as long as it brings money to the franchise, it can make another one. It's like, I, I don't want to play this, but as long as it, as long as it can bring and make another one happen. He's like, yeah. I guess, I mean... I guess, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The problem with free-to-play games and series is usually when you make a free-to-play game out of a series... Um, if it's something that's based around storyline, the series sort of grows with the free-to-play game, not with any other subsequent titles. I mean, that's why you have, like, no more... That's why you don't have a Warcraft 4. Like, that's why you don't have a Warcraft 4. You sure. have World of Warcraft, essentially. So anytime you get something that has, like, a pro progressive sort of continuing... And I'm sure they're going to have sort of a continuing story for Nazgoth. Why wouldn't they? It is Legacy of Cain. I would assume they have, like, a storyline to go with why you're fighting uh, perpetually, you know, on in, etc. Uh, but yeah, Sergio, I hope for the best. And also, your name, for some reason, reminds me of the Source engine. But if it was made... I don't know. You're like, Sergio, Source. This is my version of Source engine. If, if Valve was Spanish. If Valve, Valve was Spanish, it'd be like, Valve. we've made Sergio, Source. It is the best free-to-play Valve. I don't know. I don't know why Gabe is suddenly, you know, like a conquistador. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, here. And then finally, we have Jalopy. Our final individual, he says, I think some series actually have a lot of potential as MMOs. The world they take place in, at least Legacy of Cain, features a great setting to introduce the locations into an MMO, since there is a lore already established that doesn't directly tie into the main character of the original series. Mascot games, like Mario, should probably avoid trying it at all, though, since people expect things to be a certain way and would be furious if their fondest memories of childhood gaming mascots were crushed by a half-assed attempt at an MMO that only served as a cra cash grab. I almost said crash grab. Well, Jalopy, at least you know that Nintendo would never, ever, ever license <laughs> Mario for an MMO. Hell, they don't even do it with Pokemon. And that would yeah, make exactly. like, an that, even that better to... MMO than, than Mario would. That would have to be the first thing they do. But yeah, I'm, well, we talked about you know, a lot of series having great potential and having stories like Legacy of Kane or you yeah. know, stuff like that, I, I'm like, did, didn't we think that about uh, Star Wars The Old Republic? And I, I know we still kind of go, gee, wouldn't it be neat if Bioware made a Mass Effect RPG MMO? That's got so much storyline, all the stuff. And then we looked at Swotor and we're like, hmm, like, hmm. Uh, maybe. It, it just doesn't work out over 50 hours of gameplay. That's the thing. Like, yeah. The reason why campaign games are so good sometimes is because it's crafted into a storyline mm -hmm. And you know how long it's going to take to get through it, usually. And you can sort of set the pace. But in an MMO, it's, the pace is really set by the player. 
how yeah. much they play, how much they choose to continue the story. So the filler content, what's in between the storyline uh, progression, is really what's going to come off to the player the most. So yeah, it can be done. If it's done really well, it's great. Uh, but also, I mean, there's a lot of people who think the World of Warcraft story is good. Uh, certainly not recently, but at least the original one, you know, the, well, before Burning Crusade, I guess. I mean, there's another example of a, a type of game that sure. came out and had another one turned into an MMO, which, you know, turned out pretty well, but probably not so much for the story. What 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 am I don't I don't know that anybody plays World of Warcraft because they love the story necessarily. No, I don't. I do not play World of Warcraft because I love the story. So, I don't. What what game am I missing? Um, I was I was thinking of Elder Scrolls on Elder Scrolls slash Elder Scrolls on. But the only thing about that is that that every time, it seems like every time they they make a new story, it is in the same area, but it's set in like a different time period. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a whole new universe almost, basically. Mm-hmm. In a sense, you know, they, they sort of obey the same rules. But anyways, yes, Jalopy, I think it can be done uh, with certain series. But a lot of people just prefer the old campaign style of play. I know a lot of people did that for Warcraft 3 and would love to see a Warcraft 4, but that's probably never going to happen. All right, so the question for this week then is, how long are you willing to wait for promised features after open beta begins? You know, we've had MechWarrior Online, they promised a lot of, you know, sort of clan features, being able to do clan wars and see progression in that. We haven't seen any of that, and it's gone fully released. We have Firefall, still in open beta. Have not seen a lot of the promised features, promised early on in development uh, in regards to the PvE of the game. You know, still waiting on that. And, of course, now we've got all these promised features for Cervarium. And we'll know, you know, how far along are they going to actually be whenever they reach those milestones. So my question to you guys is, how long, how much patience, really, do you have to wait for those promised features after it goes into open beta? How long will you stick with the game or at least keep tabs on it before you're like, you know, it's been forever. I've just lost interest. Let us know in the comments below or by emailing me at michael at mmobomb.com. You can even Twitter me your response at Spunkify on Twitter. And so there's really no reason for you not to just respond to this question is basically what I'm saying. Alrighty, now Jason, this is the point in the show where we go ahead and throw it to you and you give us all your general info and how people can find you on Google Maps and come to your door and give you chocolates and presents and whatnot. If that's what they're gonna do, then they can. I'll tell them exactly where I live if they bring chocolate. I heard that they're promising. That's what they're promising. That's what the internet is promising these days. Yeah. The internet it- drives a hard bargain. Uh, in the meantime, though, until you stalk me uh, in person, you can stalk me online on Twitter at Winter Informal, also my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Jason Winter, and on my blog, jasonwinter.wordpress.com, which I will post to again someday. I'm not trying to make it seem like I'm sicking the viewers on you. Uh, if they have chocolate, if you have chocolate, let me know, and I'll give you my address. Let them know, guys. Chocolate. He is in the United States, so as long as you have access to transportation... They'll take your chocolate. Well, not don't be person. underage. Just, just... just don't be underage. <laughs> hey, kids, want some candy? Hey, no, they're giving it to you. It's kind of reverse, isn't it? Hey, uh, kids, can I have your candy? <laughs> I think that sounds even worse. Uh, alrighty, guys, that has been the episode here for our MMO Bomb podcast, free to play podcast, episode eighty-seven. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. You guys enjoyed it. How do I know? I'm psychic. But until next time. For me and Jason here, we'll see you guys later. Spunkify out. Later, guys.